Uh, today we are going to talk about letter of invitation for the US visas application and mainly the tourist visas. Many people have been asking me questions with regard to this type of letter. What is this type of letter? What are the things which are written in this type of letter? Is this letter written, supposed to be handwritten or type letter? Is this letter supposed to be written by a lawyer and the, oh, I can write on my own this type of letter? What is the weight of this letter for someone to be given the visa? Will this guarantee someone to be given the visa? So those are some of the important questions people have regarding to this type of letter. But in addition to that, I will come to explain now we are in the pandemic time, uh, will the invitation letter help you to get the visiting visa during this time of the pandemic? Or rather, what will be the reasons which can carry a little bit more weight for the consular to give you visas during this time versus the reasons which might not be looking as important reasons for you to visit in the United States of America. Welcome everyone, this is Ernest Bonifaz Makurillo and you are in the right press at the EBM Scholars, the headquarters of the information and the opportunities where you can be able to share all this kind of information. So, three things I want I'd like to ask from you. Number one, subscribe if you haven't done so. Two, share this video to so many other people and three like this video okay let's go to the video and talk about the letter of invitation for u.s visa application and mainly the tourist visa so there are two types of letters where the person inviting you is supposed to write the first letter will be a letter addressed it to you as the guest coming to America and another letter will be a letter the person inviting you is going to write to the consular officer asking the consular officer to give you the visa. The content of these two letters are a little bit different. I will start with the letter to the consular officer because that is very important. So what are the important things to be addressed in the letter to the consular officer. These are some of those things before we go to see the sample of one of the letter. Number one, the letter to the consular has for you to introduce yourself. By introducing yourself, you have to put your full name, you have to put your legal status in the United States of America. What is your immigration status? Are you international student? Are you a permanent resident? Are you here as a H1 uh, worker, a professional worker? Are you here as a United States citizen? You have to put your immigration status. That's number two. Number three, you have to put your contact. That means the phone, email, and the residential address where you live. Because there will be another part for you to identify who will be bearing the cost for that person staying in America? I will explain why that question will play a role on the person kind of questions will be asked. Then, <clears throat> you can also put down the relationship between you and the person you are inviting. And also, another thing will be, what is the itinerary? What is the activity? Why are you inviting that person to come to America? What overall objective? What the person will be doing this time? Is the person coming here just to have Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas together with your family? Is the person coming for the graduation? Or the person is just coming to just for your birthday? What is the reason person is coming? And what will be overall expectation of itinerary? What the major activities will be able to do? Not just day by day, I'll wake up at this time. No, uh, the person will, be, will go to the Super Bowl, will do this, will do this. Just the major things which you want to them to do and why will be those kind of things to be able to be added. So those are some of the things which will be included into that type of letter. So I can give example 
of that uh, that letter. But remember, that letter is a formal letter. You can type it or write by hand, but I advise you to type it, print out, sign, and then send it back. Send it to you. You don't send it to the embassy. You send the letter to the person you're inviting, if person A you're inviting is Johnson or Jane or Juma or whatever, Ibrahim, you send two letters. One letter is addressed to the consular and another letter addressed to the person you're inviting. But the person will go with both letters to the consular officer. So that is what is going to happen. So, this is the sample of the letter. Which will be able to explain what I mean. Uh, so number one, as I said, it will be uh, giving you the uh, the overall the address. For instance, like uh, so, uh, just the address. For instance, like Ernest Bonfas Makurilo, whatever, blah blah blah. My physical address. Then you put the address of who, uh, the consular officer. The for instance, if it's Dar es Salaam. Uh, so those will be the few things we'll be able to do. So in that type of letter, when you are going to to, to add those one, you have to make sure that. Uh, on the subject of the letter, you put the name of the person you are inviting, you put the passport number of the person you are inviting, and the date of birth if you like. But basically, just to have the name and the passport. I'm inviting Ernest Boniface Makurilo, I'm inviting Johnson Abdallah uh, Ibrahim uh, with passport number this one, so that it means he's directing addressing to who. So that would be number one. So. Obviously, in the in a letter, you have to introduce yourself. So, my name is Ernest Boniface Makurilo, uh, residing in, at, I put it the, exactly the address where I live. Uh, and I am the United States citizen. If you are permanent resident, you say you are, uh, you are immigration status. Whatever the immigration status you put, you have, you need to have the document to back it up. I'm requesting that you issue the tourist visa to your person you're inviting uh miss a or miss mr b whatever who resides at maybe uh kinondoni dar es salaam or residing at west lake whatever uh in blah 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 blah, blah. you put in the exact city uh this is to allow him or her to visit me in the united states then you have to identify how long have you been known together and under what type of relationship we have known together, or oh, we have been friends. So if he's a relative, uh, we, I mean, so-and-so is my brother, so-and-so is my mother, so-and-so is my uncle. So we have been known for almost for over 35 years, depending on the age you have. Or oh, I, we have, I have known, or we have known, uh, and we have been friends for the past five years, kind of that, whatever it will be. And they would like him to visit me, maybe during the summer, during the fall, during the winter, all those kind of things you got to be able to say. Uh, so, so and so, you mention the name, you have to identify what dates will that be the person to be visiting you. So, so and so will be visiting me uh, from maybe June 1st to July 2nd or July 15th. And then, what will be the purpose for the person to visit you? This will be, first of all, this will be the time because uh, during that particular summer, maybe my kids and myself will be having a uh, vacation uh, and also uh, so and so will be also having time. It's the time of the year is also having a vacation uh, or time off from work. And uh, while you'll be here, you have to explain that who will be bearing the cost, where the guests will be living. So you can say, uh, 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 so, so during the stay, so and so will be staying with me at my address. You can put the address if you own the house or will be staying with us, us in the three bedroom apartment at this particular address. You can be able to put that. And in addition to that, who will be able to, so the place to stay, food and their local transportation, I'll be able to cover that. So you put that way. That means by adding those one, you are going to reduce another type of burden from that person. Because if you don't mention those one, it means that person has to prove who will purchase the flight ticket. Who will be, if you say you are staying for a month, you have to show which hotel are you going to stay. So that means by saying you will stay at me in this address, that means they will not be asking which hotel are you going to stay. Uh, or what is the flight ticket? Because once you get the visa, I will purchase the ticket. 
they are not going to ask you what is the cost of the local transportation because it will be under me so that is something which will be able to help on one person so uh, for instance i'll be responsible for accommodation flight ticket uh and also food and the local transportation all those time when the person is here in the united states and once the person uh the time of the visa we have requested has finished I will make sure that the person is returning back home. But basically, it's adult. You cannot carry the person out of the country. You just say that, but that doesn't have any weight. Because in the end, once the person is in the United States, you as a person who invited the person, you have no obligation to carry a person to into the plane so that they can return back to their home country. No. So, so and so will be uh, presenting you this letter together with the other documentations or other evidence to establish his close ties with uh, his home country or whatever Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya, Sudan, whatever and to ensure you that he or she will be returning home upon the expiration time requested for the stay in the United States country regards and blah 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 so that will be uh, the overall type of the visa uh, the letter will be kind of that but there are a few things on this letter, if you have seen. Number one, this letter is helping the person or the consular to understand that you are here legally. You are not involved in criminal activities. In addition to that, uh, you will be able responsible for flight ticket, accommodation, and local transportation, meaning those kind of expenses will not be incurred by that particular guest so there are certain questions will be able to be removed from him or her so that will be number one but after this one what evidences you do you need to support you need to add the following things number one you will need to add the immigration status your passport copy if you uh, if let's say you are you are green card holder you will include your pa green card the actual green card if you're an international student, you have to put the, your passport page along with the visa or I-20 also to prove that you are here legally. That's something you need to do. Because you have said that uh, I'll be responsible for flight ticket and everything, I advise it would be better also that person who is writing a letter from America to include either, you can include just overall the uh, W-2, how much money you make per year, or you can include the pay types of the two previous checks you have been able to get and say, I've been working for this particular organization as director or whatever for this number of time, and this is how much I, I make, just to assure that there is no problem if you are coming here and how are they going to, uh, the person is going to support you. And also the reasoning, I'll go to explain in detail later, but the reasoning is supposed to be very good reason, especially with this during the pandemic. I'll explain that at the end of the uh, the video. But if you say it's coming for, uh, the, let's say the wedding, you have to include also the uh, if the wedding you are marriage license, which is sh shows that when are you going to get married or the invitation letter. So there are so many things they have to include. Uh, if you are saying it's coming for graduation, you are need to have the evidence from the school to prove that you are going to graduate. And when is the graduation graduation date exactly? So all those kind of things you have to be able to. There are certain things that require uh, some sort of evidences. It's coming for the funeral. You have to include some of those kind of things like uh, maybe my father passed away and he, this one is my relative. I would like the person to come here to attend the funeral and these are the evidence of the funeral and all that kind of things. So that is uh, the first letter which goes to the consular officer. Then the other letter is addressing to you. That one is very simple. Uh, so that one is just like, so to be dear so-and-so, blah, 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 my address, whatever. So I put your name, your address, whatever over there. So dear, don't, blah, 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 you, a, whatever your name. Uh, I invite you to visit us and spend your vacation in the United States with us. We have planned to visit famous tourist places like Disney, blah, 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 blah. Kind of that so that's when i said you need to have itinerary that we are planning to do we are planning to go for the nba finals which will be held on this day so that will be something we are planning coming here for the thanksgiving once we come for the thanksgiving we'll have the dinner at our house but also we'll go do shopping for 
for Black Friday and also we are going to have Christmas dinner and also we'll be able to enjoy the snow so we'll be going to these kind of events which are snow related to activities so you can be able to do those kind of things uh, it will also be an opportunity for you to see and experience the American culture and lifestyle all these kind of things I'll be taking off <coughs> I'll be taking care of your entire USA tour expenses, including the round trip ticket, food, housing, medical insurance, and your other personal expenses. Uh, uh, here with, I'm sending all the required documentation for getting the necessary tourist visa from the U.S. consulate or the embassy. Blah blah blah. Is the embassy in Nairobi? You put the embassy in Nairobi or Dar es Salaam, whatever. Sincerely yours. So, friendly letter. There is nothing fancy on that type of letter. So, on the invitation, there is nothing uh, fancy about that. So, those are the few things you need to, to have. And whether you're inviting a friend, a parent, whatever, it will be similar uh, related things. But, does this letter guarantee you to be given the visa? The letter for invitation by no means guarantees you to be given the visa, insurance of the visa. The applicant has to provide evidences to meet the visa requirement. What are the evidences to meet the visa requirement? There is something called, you must prove the non-immigrant intent. Remember, when you apply as a visiting visa, you are applying as a student, you are applying as a worker, you are applying whatever, those type of visa, they are called non-immigrant visas. Meaning, you are not coming here with the intention of becoming immigrant. Immigrant is a permanent resident. Immigrant is a green card holder. If you are an international student, you are not immigrant. You are non-immigrant. Meaning, you are coming to the United States for a short stay. Temporary time staying in the United States. If you are coming here for even for three years as an international student, you will be staying here for three years as an international student with the expectation of going back to your home country. If you are coming as a tourist for two months, after the two months you must be going back to your home country. So this is what is written under the U.S. visa policy. The United States regulations require the consular officer who considers your visa application to assume that you want to, immig to become immigrant or to remain in the United States on the permanent basis. So in order to be given this type of visa, you must convince the consular officer that uh, my intention is to be there on a temporary basis. I want to go there for one month and to come back to my home country. And in order to prove that, you have to show the ties you have with your country. And not just by saying, I'm a very patriotic person in my country. I'm very committed. I'm the most person committed and I love my country. I drank the water from the flag from the country. No, those are just mere words. You need to show what is your and your income. How much money do you have on a monthly basis if you are working? If you are doing business, show the proof of the business, proof of the off ownership. What assets do you have? What other things are tying you to the land of your country? That you can say, okay, I have a family. First of all, I'm 50 years old. I'm working as a university professor. I have three kids. I'm married. And not just by saying, go with all the evidences. I own apartments, these three apartments, and this is my income. Apart from that, I'm teaching at this one. And this is the letter from my employer to say that I'll be on leave of this time, but this is the, my paycheck, how much I get on a monthly basis. So you see, you need to have all those evidences to prove that you'll be coming back to your home country, to show the ties. That's why the young people are having difficult time to show the proof. Because they don't have most of the things. That's why majority of people are denied the visa because the failure to prove that once I go to America, I'll be coming back once the visa expires. So the proof providing the proof of the non-immigrant intent that my intention is to stay there on the temporary basis. So that is the reason. 
You have to prove all those kind of with the assets. So the invitation letter is just a letter. In the end, it comes down to you. If you just graduated from college and you have done nothing for three years, you're just doing gambling on betting, whatever, you are not going to be given the visa just by saying, oh, I have the letter. So don't ask EBM, can, I give, can you invite me to come to America? To do what? I have to explain the, the relationship. Why are you coming here? What event brings you to America? So it's not just the letter. And I will ask you, even before the consul ask, what is you, how, how much money do you make in a year or in a month? What assets do you have? If you don't have any assets, don't trust your money to go to the U.S. Embassy. You will be denied. So that is something you need to, to know that. And I'm going to add something now. We are in the pandemic time. At this particular time, there is a backlog of over a half a million visas, which are now, these are visas which you call immigrant visas. People who are waiting to be given a green card. This can be green card by marriage, green card by parents applying forever, or parents applying for the children, or someone. All those can we call, or fiancé visas, we are going to, those are immigrant visas. Those are the number one priority. Non-immigrant visas, tourists, student, whatever, those are not a priority at the moment. Unless otherwise is emergency-related visa. So if you are coming for the medical attention, you have to prove all this kind of situation. But you cannot just say, I'm going to visit someone because I'm going to eat Christmas dinner. That's not emergency related. So during this time, the rate of uh, non-immigrant visas, especially tourist visas, uh, they will be declining because you will not be even have a time to get the visas. Because if you look on the visa availability dates, they can be maybe in December. And if you go in December, is that a very important uh, reason for you to go? Is that emergency?